And just to show that I'm not totally prejudiced, I even got some maps about the South. Here's one that you'll all recognise. This is Hertfordshire. Uh, I wouldn't claim any degree of detailed knowledge of Hertfordshire, and I know we're going to hear something about Hertfordshire work uh, later in the day, but just looking at the maps, interesting things immediately start to fly off the page at you. All right, so the bulk of Hertfordshire's got little red dots. Nothing much at all, really, except when you look down at the south, and certainly when you look up here. I would have wished that Helen had put that there because it's a bit confusing. This is Hitchin Rural District. That's Hitchin Urban. And what's this big dot? We'll come to that in a minute. Down here, of course, Watford. And quite a big dot in Watford Rural. Let's do the thing with the CO index. And bingo. Hitchin Rural, bright purple, top of the categories, if you like, of CO significance. It's a hot spot. Down at the bottom, Watford, Watford Rural, still in the second category, so they're rather more hot spots than even Huddersfield was, would you believe? And I find that difficult to believe, but there you go. So what's going on? Well, Watford, I suppose you could expect, because it's a fairly well-diversified political, economic culture, you would expect an area like that with a well-established labour movement, independent Labour Party, branch of the BSP and all the rest, to have similar characteristics to Huddersfield. What's a bit worrying, what was, until I came up with the single simple answer, and sometimes there are single simple answers, in Watford Rural, of course, is that in Watford Rural is Stanborough Park, which is the main headquarters for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and it's where they train their ministers. So practically all the CEOs from Watford Rural are Seventh-day Adventist ministers in training. Much more complicated picture for Watford itself, but what about the far north, Hitchin Rural? Well, Hitchin Rural, of course, as you're all desperate to tell me, is about Letchworth. Letchworth coming into existence in the years before the war, really modelled on Ebenezer Howard's notion of the garden city. The place to live, the ideal place to live with its balance between the built and the rural and all the rest of it. By the time of the First World War, and partly because I think of its established commuter line to London, had become a centre to which all sorts of interesting people came. Writers, civil servants, radicals of one kind or another. So in a sense, when you start to look at the social makeup of Letchworth in the war years, it's not too surprising. It continued to have a rather interesting social makeup even into the 1920s and 30s. You'll all know that George Orwell didn't like Letchworth much. He certainly didn't like Letchworth people because he regarded them as being the curiosities that gave socialism a bad name. Because Letchworth socialists were the ones who wore Sandals, grew beards, had floppy hats and talked endlessly about the allotments and about vegetarianism.